Hi friends. Today I brought one of my favorite paintings with me and I thought we could spend a few minutes studying it. It's called A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte and it was painted by a famous painter named Georges Seurat. He worked incredibly hard to make this picture especially detailed. Would you believe Seurat painted this scene entirely with tiny dots and small brush strokes? Let's notice everything we can about this painting. So look closely at it. What do you notice? Who is in the scene? Where is this taking place? What are the people doing? How do you think they're feeling? So I'd like to pause this video and ask you what you observe about this painting. So we notice that they're all at a park near the water and there's lots of trees. It's really busy and there's lots of people walking around. It looks like they might be having a picnic, their dogs playing, and it's sunny, but they have umbrellas. There's not any rain. They must be using those to block out the sunshine. It's so bright and sunny and those are helping. It also looks old fashioned because of their clothes. So are you wondering why we are studying this painting during reading workshop? So here's your why. Books are a lot like paintings and the authors are a lot like painters. But instead of using a paintbrush, authors use words. You are growing to be such experts on your series books, learning all that you can about the characters and what's happening in each story. Now, as series experts, you're ready for even bigger work. You see, expert readers know how important it is to pay attention, not just to what the character is doing in the story, but also what the author is doing on the page, the author's craft. So instead of me telling you all the things authors do on a page to help paint that vivid picture for readers, let's work together to investigate some possible answers. The question we will be investigating together is, what do authors do to paint a pic vivid picture with words. Georges Seurat, he painted this vivid picture with paints, but authors do it with words. So we're going to explore another book very soon, and I'm excited to hear what you think the author's doing to paint a vivid picture with his words or her words. As promised, here it is, polar bears past bedtime. So I need to get my sticky note here because I don't want you to just look at the picture on the first page and figure out everything that's going on. So as we read, I want you to pay attention not just to what the character is doing, but also what the author is doing. Think to yourself, what parts really paint a vivid picture in my mind? And then we can name what the author is doing to paint that picture. Whew. The strange sound came from outside the open window. Jack opened his eyes in the dark. The sound came again. Whoo! Jack sat up and turned on his light. He put on his glasses. Then he grabbed the flashlight from his table and shone it out the window. A white snowy owl was sitting on a tree branch. branch. Whoo! The owl said again. It's large. How did the author think about that vivid scene. What did they do to help you create that picture in your mind? Can you see it? Because I can. How did Mary Pope Osborne do that? Let's keep on reading with that question in mind. Its large yellow eyes looked right into Jack's. What does he want? Jack wondered. Is he a sign like the rabbit and the gazelle? A long-legged rabbit and a gazelle had led Jack and Annie to the magic treehouse 
for their last two adventures. Whoo! Wait a second, Jack said to the owl. I'll get Annie. Jack's sister Annie always seemed to know what birds and animals were saying. Jack jumped out of bed and hurried to Annie's room. She was sound asleep. Jack shook her and she stirred. What? she said. Come to my room, whispered Jack. I think Morgan's sent another sign. In a split second, Annie was out of bed. So what do you think? Is that picture getting even more vivid? Let's think about these first two pages. What parts really stand out to you? How did the author paint a picture? Go ahead and tell me what parts stood out to you. So some of the things that I noticed is in the beginning, there was a sound word. You could hear the owl. Of course, I picked up a wonky marker. Let me get a different one. So you can hear the owl say who and then it also said that it's dark and the sound was outside the window I'm not worrying right now about capitals and periods because I'm just writing quick notes so the author describes the setting and includes that sound to help you not only see what's happening, but also to hear it too. So you can see and hear what is happening. So um, and then the other thing is you could see all the things that Jack was doing, like he was getting the flashlight and shining it at the owl and then going to Annie's room to wake her up. So when the author includes lots of actions, it helps us see what's happening. So lots of actions. Um, let's think about other things. So you do that in your writing too. You use small actions to paint a picture in your stories. As I add that to your list, to the list, let me think of something else. You know, the other thing is they use a lot of talking. So instead of them just telling you what's going on, they're using talking to help us understand what's happening. So. I'm sure that we had even more ideas than this, and I'm excited to talk about those. So today in our seesaw, you're going to do this again, but I'm gonna read a little bit more and you're gonna tell me a couple things you notice. So be sure to pay close attention right now as I continue to read and you can think of things that the author did to help you see and understand the story even better. She hurried with Jack to his room. Jack led her to the window. The snowy owl was still there. Who said the owl. Then he raised his white wings and took off into the night. Ooh, I can see that, can you? If you need to make a little note on your sticky notes as I'm reading to help you remember when you're making your or when you're doing your assignment in Seesaw, you can do that. He wants us to go in the woods, said Annie. That's what I thought, said Jack. Meet you downstairs after we get dressed. No, no, he says to go now, right now, said Annie, 
We'll have to wear our pajamas. I have to put on my sneakers, said Jack. Okay, I'll put mine on too. Meet you downstairs, said Annie. Jack pulled on his sneakers. He threw his notebook into his backpack. Then he grabbed his flashlight and tiptoed downstairs. <gasps> I've done that before. The author must be making, oh, maybe I said too much. Annie was waiting at the front door. They silently slipped outside together. The night was warm. Moths danced around the porch light. I feel weird, said Jack. I'm going back to put on some real clothes. You can't, said Annie. The owl said, right now. She jumped off the porch and headed across their dark yard. Jack groaned. How did Annie know exactly what the owl said, he wondered. Still, he didn't want to let be left behind, so he took off after her. The moon lit their way as they ran down their street. When they entered the Frog Creek woods, Jack turned on his flashlight. The beam of light showed shadows and swaying branches. Ooh, that sounds a little spooky to me. Jack and Annie stepped together between the trees. They stayed close together. Whoo, Jack jumped in fear. It's just the white owl, said Annie. He's somewhere nearby. The woods are creepy, said Jack. Yeah, said Annie. In the dark, it doesn't even feel like our woods. Suddenly, the owl flapped near them. Yikes, said Annie. Jack shone his flashlight on the white bird as it rose into the sky. The owl landed on a tree branch right next to the magic tree house. And there was Morgan Le Fay, the enchantress librarian. Her long white hair gleamed in the beam of Jack's flashlight. Your job is to go tell me about something that you saw the author do that helped you be in the story more. Remember, we said she used a sound word like who that helped us to hear it. She described what it looked like. We could see and hear what was happening. There were lots of actions and there was talking. What did she do that helped you to see it too? Go to Seesaw and tell me right now and turn that into me. Thanks friends.